Hi, it's Karen Zinn here, Registered Dietitian, and we're looking at some of the latest scientific research on lifestyle medicine in Science in a Minute. This study was recently published by a group in the States led by Cara Ebling and David Ludwig. This was a really important study because it shows for one of the first times that not all calories are equal when it comes to keeping lost weight off long term. The study itself was a randomized controlled trial conducted on 164 adults. The first part of the study was actually getting these people to lose 12% of their body weight. And then at that point, they were randomized to one of three different diets for 20 weeks in order to maintain the weight that they'd lost prior. So it was essentially a weight maintenance study. The different diets were a high carbohydrate diet, so a diet that had 60% of its total energy coming from carbs, a moderate carbohydrate diet, so 40% carbs, or a low carbohydrate diet, or 20%. The protein in the diets were kept the same across all three diets, so it was really the carbohydrate to fat ratio that was altered across the, the different diets. The researchers measured energy expenditure using a very sophisticated technique uh, called doubly labeled water and they also measured some other things including hunger and fullness hormones, leptin and ghrelin. The results were analyzed in two different ways. Um, they used an intention to treat and a per protocol analysis. So just to explain what that means, a per protocol analysis includes those people who manage to maintain the target weight loss um, within two Ks of where it needed to be throughout the study. Um, and the per protocol analysis is really there to provide a more precise estimate of the overall outcome, whereas the intention to treat protocol is looking at including everyone in the analysis, even those that they didn't necessarily meet that, um, that weight maintenance uh, aspect. So anyway, what happened? Let's, let's take a look. So even when you look at both levels of analysis, you can see that the amount of energy burned was greatest for the people in the low carb group um, it was slightly less for those in the moderate carbohydrate group and then the least in the high carb group. In their intention to treat analysis, uh, looking at some numbers, compared to those in the high carb group, the moderate carbers burned 91 calories per day more and the low carbers burned 209 calories more than those in the high carbohydrate diet. And in the per pro protocol analysis, these numbers were actually higher. Another finding um, that, was, that was quite interesting is that the hormone ghrelin, which is the hunger hormone, was found to be statistically significantly less in the low carb group compared to the high carb group. So what is useful about this study? What does it all mean? Well, we know that when it comes to losing weight, you can pretty much do anything and enable weight to come off. Uh, but keeping it off is the challenge. So a lot of options might work, but in this case, we see that by having a low carbohydrate diet, our body has the ability to spontaneously burn more energy than it would on a moderate or a high carbohydrate diet. In this case, it was seen, um, seen even more in those people who had a higher level of insulin secretion or in other words in those people who were more poorly metabolically regulated to start with so there you go i'll leave you to ponder these points food is medicine and prevention is cure